know. I'm sorry. Please, please help, help. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I'm, I'm sorry. That was the last words that I heard from Calvin. Let's get to it. When you grow up in the streets of Columbus, Ohio, and you don't have no strong father figure in your life, and your mother can only can do the best that she can do with you. Because truth be told, a woman can teach a boy certain things, but a woman can't teach a boy how to be a man. I know a lot of us grew up with just our mothers in the house because our daddies wasn't there for whatever reason. Some of our fathers walked out. Some of our fathers went to prison. Some of our fathers turned to drugs. Some of them is not here with us. They in the spiritual world. So I get it. Calvin would grow up to be running in the streets of Columbus, Ohio. Calvin kept him a gun and Calvin would use it if he had to. Well, the problem is Calvin, he was known for beating up guys. At this point, never used a gun. He had it. Oh, he had it. He always had it. But he always used his fists. Till one day, he run, in, he run into one of his ops. You know, that's what the young the young crowd say now, ops. Back in our day, we used to say our enemies or, yeah, our enemies. But I guess it's called the ops now, right? Oh, yeah. Before I go on, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button. Now, let's get back to it. So now, Calvin ended up running to one of his ops at the gas station. He pulls up. He see he sees his op right there in front of the, in front of the gas station. So he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he hop out. He said, yo, what's up? His op like, man, I ain't even on that today. I ain't even on that. He like, what? You ain't on what? Pop, pop, pop. He get the bombing on him immediately. Calvin, uh, uh, uh. You know, dude trying to fight back. But Calvin like 6'3". Dude, maybe like 5'11". Calvin whooping on him. Peek, 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 peek. Nickelodeon. So he beating on him. Boom, 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 boom. Right, dude like, man, chill, chill, you got it, you got that, you got that, you got that. So Calvin whipped him out for maybe about, I'm going to say about 35 seconds. I don't know why this dude was Calvin Op. It was maybe some street stuff. I, who knows? You know, I, I didn't get all the details, so I don't really know exactly why these two was beefed out. So he said, you got that, you got that. Calvin like, yeah, I know I got that. I know I got that. Calvin commenced to go into the store. I don't know what he got in the store. This is what the CCV TV picked up. So they, you see Calvin enter in the store. He go grab from a bag of chips and he go get him a coat. He go to the register. Then you see a guy coming there with a gun like this. I don't know exactly what's being said. There's words that's changed and the gunfire erupt. Do, 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 do. Calvin take off running. Doom. He running through the store. Do shoot and do run out. Calvin, he's ducking. He's looking, waiting to the closest clear. So then he look he he go to the door. He go to he look to the left, then he look to the right. He see the coast is clear. So he run out the store from the head to his car. Then he hear boom, 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 boom. So now he dug it. So now he gotta get to his car to go get his hammer. So Calvin gets to the car, his windows getting shot out. Do do right. So now Calvin get a hit hold of his grip and he get the letting off. He don't see he don't see where the shot's being fired at, where the direction it's being fired at. He just know he got his hammer and he got a bus back. So the car door is halfway open. He's just shooting like, he's shooting indiscriminately now. He's shooting like this, like over the top, like pop, 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 pop. Not seeing where them bullets flying at. He ended up hitting a woman that was carrying a child. She was pregnant. Six months pregnant, to be exact. He didn't know that when he was engaged in this gun battle and he was shooting wildly, that he was going to hit somebody innocent? No, he didn't know that. You know, all he just, all he, he was just doing what he was doing, returning fire. Didn't know where the fire was coming from. But, hey, that's what happened. He ended up hitting a pregnant woman. So Calvin jumps, jumps in his car. Skrrr! He dips. He go to his apartment. Word is getting around. Yo, Calvin, Calvin killed La Latanja. Latanja. Latanja, baby daddy, is a real shot caller in the streets on the east side of Columbus. He got a lot of pool. He's a big drug dealer. At the time, at this time, Calvin didn't know what he have done. His phone get the ringing, blowing up. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Y'all. Hey, bro. You good? You good? I heard what happened. You good? Yeah, I'm good. You say, all right, all right. Then more conversations will come that'll follow that will be, hey, bro, man. Hey, 
I don't know what's going on, but hey man, you did, did man, you, you did you kill somebody? And he like, nah, bro, I don't think so. I mean, and then he go into the story of saying this and saying that, like, yo, I just went into the store. Some dude came in there and got the bus and at me. I came back to my car. I got the bus back and you know, and then I got up out of there. You know, now he hearing more and more that, you know, that he took out a girl, a pregnant woman. So now he paranoid. Now every time he hear a car go by his apartment, he looking out the window. He strapped up too. Keep that in mind too. Now he real annoyed. Cause now he finding out like, yo, you shot the wrong you shot a woman, a pregnant woman, and this woman that you shot is connected to the streets heavily, right? <sighs> So now he thinking like, all right, man, I got to get out of Columbus. I got to go. Unbeknownst to him, <clears throat> police is looking for him. Detectives, all this going on in, in, in an hour, in a span of two hours, the police, the, the police is out there in, in heavy force knocking on doors. He he only stay about three blocks away from, this, from the gas station where this happened at. So they out there in full force. They looking for him. The streets is now looking for him. Uh, baby daddy, the drug, the drug guy from the east side, put the word out. Fine, Calvin. I do not want the police getting a hold of Calvin. Fine, Calvin, and bring him to me, dead or alive. Right? I mean, just imagine. You 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 have a six month old child. That's not born yet. And your baby mama is an innocent bystander. You ain't trying to hear none of that. You don't want, if you're a street guy, you don't want the police to obtain the suspect. You want to administer your own justice. Not only you took the life of my baby, my unborn child, but then you took the life of my baby mama or the girl that he was kicking with. I don't know, was she just a baby mama? I don't know, was, was she the girlfriend or none of that? But you took her life too. I don't want. I repeat. I do not want the authorities. To take him in. Y'all dismissed. So it's goons out there looking for him. Goons putting the word out. Where Calvin at? Where Calvin at? They done shot up Calvin mama house. They done shot up Calvin other baby mama house. Right? Cal, one of Calvin's cousins get jammed up, get knocked off in the alley. Some guys rolled up on his cousin, right? Snatched him up. Where, where Calvin at? Well, I don't know where Calvin at. Oh, a word? All right, well, watch this. Pop, 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 pop. Left one of his cousins in the alley. It was thick. It was serious. Calvin, Calvin opened up a can of worms. He opened up Pandora's box. You got not only you got probably one of the dangerous men in Columbus, Ohio looking for you, right? And his goonies. You got day near half of Franklin County, Columbus PD looking for you too. The surprise fact is, I'm gonna say about three hours to pass, and the police have not knocked on his door. Nobody has knocked on his door yet. There's a couple people that know where Calvin live at. But, you know, Calvin was the type of guy that didn't bring people to his house. Calvin wasn't the type of guy that brought people where he laid his head at, right? So Calvin is sitting here thinking, you know, he getting these phone calls, his mama calling him. Baby, what did you do? Mama, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing, mama. They, they was trying to get me. They was trying to get me, mama. Oh, Calvin. Calvin, please, please take, be careful, Calvin. Just turn yourself in, Calvin. Where are you, baby? Calvin, I love you. I love you too, mama. But my mama, I gotta go. I gotta go, man. I, I gotta get my mind right, mama. Calvin, I love you, baby. I love you. Please be careful. Right? So, Calvin, get off the phone. He got about $10,000 in cash. He get him a duffel bag. And he, his plan is to leave out of the city by sundown. When the sun's setting. To move around in the dark. But here's the thing. 
the police out there, but the police presence is going to die down. But them goons know that this is the neighborhood that you be in. So they going to be out there too. And they going to be waiting for you, Calvin. So Calvin, he just sitting there. He roll up a blunt, you know, he, you know, he's shaking like this, you know, can't get a hold of it. And, you know, he do what he do. You know, he trying to ease his mind. But he know he can't really go, you know, really get too um, relaxed because, you know, he got to stay on point. You know, he got the goons out there looking for him. You know, at, at a certain part of time, you know, he get a phone call from one of his homies and he like, yo, bro, um, listen, where you at? Calvin like, man, I'm I'm I I'm around, man. What's up? He like, bro, I mean, but tell me where you at so I can come get you. Calvin like, nah, man, I I, I don't really want nobody knowing where I'm at right now. It's bro like, Calvin, man, you know, I, I got you, you know, you, you know we dogs, man. I, I got you. I'm gonna hold you down, man. What's your plan? So Calvin get to telling him, like, yo, man, I, um, I need to get up out of here, man. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna head down to the A. I'm going to head down to Atlanta, man, and lay low down there till all this stuff die over. And he like, well, I mean, do you need a ride? Man, I, I can help you get down there. Unbeknownst to Calvin, the police is on that phone call, too. Unbeknownst to Calvin, they're tracking him down. They're using them cell towers to track him down. So he on the phone, he, he, he steady talking to him and talking to him. Then the phone hangs up. Calvin like, hello? Hello? Now Calvin is real paranoid now. So Calvin like, that was weird, man. So Calvin calls him back. No answer. So Calvin like, man, is he trying to set me up? So now Calvin real, he like, okay, it's time to go. So as Calvin getting his bags ready, about to head out the door. Boom! Front door blow in. Cologne PD! Cologne PD! Get down, get down, get down! They come in there thick, the guns out, all that. Get down, get down, get down. You know, they throw them up on the couch, rough them up. Y'all know, y'all know how them, y'all know how the police do it. Shout out to the police, y'all. So they roughing them up, you know, put cranking his arm all up and putting his arm behind his back all rough. You know, throw them handcuffs on. And they walk them out. At this point in time, a crowd done gathered. You got cats out there. Yeah, it's over for you, Calvin. It's over for you. You got the baby daddy out there just nuts. He like, he actually finally see Calvin and, yo, his homeboys. Let me go. Let me go. Yo, let me go. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to die. It's, it's, it's pandemonium mayhem out there, you know. The crowd pr pressing up against the police and all that. So, they get they end up getting Calvin. And um, put him in a patrol car. It's dudes just trying to get out. It's like a full blown riot that's going on out there right now. So, Calvin ended up getting. He go down there to Franklin County downtown. When he go in there, they instantly, instantly, instantly put him in a hole. Well, they don't. Have, they don't got. It's not the hole, but I just call it the hole because I don't know what else you want to call. It. You go in this elevator. And you go all the way down to the basement, and they got like this green room, and it's padded. And they put you in there if you're talking about, oh, you're going to commit suicide and all this type of stuff. They had to put um, Calvin up in there because when Calvin went into process, they processed him, man, you know, the usual asking, um, asking them questions. Where do you live? Do you got medical issues and things like that, whatever the case may be? Um, do you think that, are you gang affiliated? That's, that's, what, that's what happened when you get in booking. So in booking, they had Calvin chained to um he was chained to a bench. Some dude that was walking past that I guess that was cool with um the drug dealer out in the outside. He knew he knew who Calvin was and just laid into him. Bam, bam, bam. Calvin couldn't do nothing. Calvin only had one free hand to block to block the punches. And the guards let it go down for like 10 seconds. There was literally a guard right there on the side of Calvin. And he let that go down. Then he carry up and bro broke it up and pushed dude against the wall. And another CO came over there and grabbed him. So they had to shoot him downstairs and put him and put him into the hole. So Calvin's sitting there looking crazy like, man, there's mad. So not so I mean just imagine. You can only imagine 
and th there's a lot of things that I'm skipping because if I don't like the the story haven't even began yet, believe it or not. This story right here haven't even started yet. I'm giving y'all the backstory of Calvin before we even get to yo. This is why this is why I say for you young guys out there, man, that's out in the streets, one mistake, one mistake can cost you the rest of your life. You know, he could have left him alone. When 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 he pulled up at the gas station, when Calvin pulled up at the gas station and he seen this op, he could have let it ride. But no, he got out the car and bombed the oh. That this remind me of King Von. That's crazy. When King Von was when he was in Atlanta in a club. And somebody whispered in his ear and said, yo, Quando Rondo outside. The King Von got up, went outside, and bombed on Quando. And then we know what happened next. Lil Tim up the pole and rest in peace, King Von. Same thing. Same scenario. Right? He, he could have let us out ride. He could have just went in the store, got his coat. Got his bag of chips or whatever he was going to get his Philly wraps or whatever he was going to go get. He could have let that ride, but he didn't. He decided to bomb on him. And dude came back in the store and got the bombing on him. Didn't hit him. Right? Then he go outside and he get the busting back. He didn't hit his enemy. He he didn't hit his op. He hit he hit an innocent woman, a child. It's no longer here. So he have to pay. All right? Got to pay. So he down there in the hole that's going through it. He 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 worried about his mama because he know. He know dude ain't going to stop. Dude going to try. If dude can't get you, I want y'all to listen to this. For, for all you cats out there that's tearing the streets up, that's on demon time. That got a mother out there, a father, brothers and sisters, cousins and stuff like that. Baby mama's kids. There's some guys out here that because they can't get you, they'll go after your family. I remember this one time I had a homeboy named Homicide from Atlanta. I do not associate, associate with this guy no longer. He is what you call... The pure definition of a demon, a demon from the bottomless pits of hell. He had this, he had beef with this dude named Sir. I don't know what the beef was about. I think it was even over a girl, right? The beef got so out of hand that, you know, it came from fist. Homicide, he was a fighter. He would knock you out with one punch clean. He, he, he was a boxer, right? Sir, he could fight too, but he wasn't messing with homicide. They went from fighting to shooting at each other, okay? Then it got to a point where I don't know what homicide was thinking. I don't know what was going on in his mind. Sir had a three-year-old daughter. I don't even really want to tell the story, but this I, I have to tell the story because it's young guys out here that's out here committing these crimes, that's doing drug deals. You know, thinking it's cool to run off on a plug. You got people out here, right? Homicide walks up to him with the strap out. He say, what up? Sir, so like, oh, oh, bro, you going to do this in front of my daughter? You going to do this in front of my daughter? He said, nah. He pointed the gun at the daughter. And well, I'm not even going to say what happened next. Just know, sir is still alive and the daughter rest in heaven. That's all I'm going to say about that. He figured, oh, I'll hurt you. I'll hurt you way worse than you can ever hurt me, boy. Yeah. His daughter isn't here. Sir daughter isn't here anymore. Homicide is doing three life sentences. Okay. In the Georgia Correctional Facility. He ain't never getting out ever getting out. I had to dissociate. When I heard about this, 
It I I said I was just with this dude two days ago. Two days ago. Me and this dude was at the gun range. At the gun range. And then two days later, this is what you do? Why you there? Why? My question is why? Why? Why do people... It's almost Halloween time. And we watch Jason Voorhees. Halloween with Michael Myers. Freddy Cougar. It's real life. Freddy Cougars and Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees out here in this world. Y'all got to be careful. Be careful. Always stay on guard. One of my homies the other day told me like, man, why you always so paranoid, man? Why you always, always looking around? There's always, when you talk, you always looking around and, and just always. I said, because do you know where we at? We are in Chicago. Dude, you he like he like man, chill, man. You always you always tripping, man. Won't you you always trying to act like this place? I said, dude. Even though I don't be in Chicago a lot, I come to Chicago maybe four times out of the month, right? You never know where it could come from. Even though I don't got beef in the streets, even though I don't seek out problems and issues with people. I could be with the dude I was with. I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to say the location. There's no way in Chicago, the South Side. Just because I'm standing with him, he could have beef with somebody. He could have did something crazy to somebody, and I don't even know. And he don't even tell me. And then somebody come up, come around the corner and black, 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 black. And now y'all saying, rest in peace, Dante. It ain't no more lockdown 88. Y'all going to see me on the t-shirt and pour a little liquor out, right? Uh, and, and if y'all going to pour some liquor out, pour some Hennessy out for me, okay? Hit that like button. But let's get back to the story. So now he's sitting there. He's sitting there and all these thoughts going through his mind. And he's thinking like, man, I just, I just want to, I just want to die. It, it's too much. Imagine the whole weight of the world. It's on this guy's head. He thinking about his mama. He thinking about his two kids that's out there in the world. His baby mama. Yo, his 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 mind is going a hundred places, a hundred miles per hour everywhere. Everywhere. So he so he's sitting in there, right? The guards come in there. They like, are right, you ready? He go upstairs. All right, they get back on the elevator. One of the guards, two guards, they get to um, I want to say the bullpen floor, where you go into after you get processed. No, let me back up. After you get processed, they put you in this holding tank. It's like a bench, and then it's a toilet right there, and it's a little space right here, and the door right there, and maybe five guys can fit in there. And they put him in the cell by himself, right? So he's sitting in there. They give him, they give him a, um, a bologna sandwich with two cookies and a pack of mustard, right? And a water bottle. So he's sitting there. He eat the sandwich slow, because at, at that point, how can you eat? You got too much going on. Your stomach won't even hold it down. But he nibbling on it. One of the guards going there. They like, hey, you better get you a hold of a blade because when you about to go, you're going to need it. Talk about adding, adding, adding to the, adding to the problems that he already faced mentally, right? Now he's thinking like, he just feel defeated. Feeling of defeat, Right? Feeling of regret. So he's sitting in there. So then I I believe maybe I'ma say this this happened around. I'm thinking he's in there. He he got in the bull tank maybe around ten. 
and they move them around three o'clock in the morning and put them on the floor. I'm not exactly remember because I'm trying to remember because when I was locked up in Franklin County, I know. Okay, so you go to processing. After you go to processing, they put you in the bullpen, which he just came from. Then you go upstairs to a, a floor. I'm trying to think, but that's not even the main floor. It's like another holding tank with his bunk bags at like an open pod, kind of like that. But it's like, it's not open. It's like a 16-man cell. Like it's two, four, six. Yep, it's four bunk bags over here and four bunk bags over here. And there's a TV right there. There's a shower all the way in the back. So they take him there. So when he get in there, dude's looking at him. Some guy, some, it's like three or four guys up. And they looking at him as he coming down the tier. And then most of the guys are asleep. So when he get in there, you know, he go in there. He, he jump on this bunk. He lay down. Ain't nobody really checking for him. They, people looking and like, oh, okay, there ain't nobody. Or, you know, I guess the word haven't hit that pot right there yet. So he thought. There was this fat dude, this big, fat, nasty dude, right? I don't even know his name. I, I remember the reason why I know this part, because this is when I was in there, right? I didn't even know who Calvin was. When Calvin came in there, I was dozing. So this is where the story starts, where my first um, recollections, I can tell y'all the story of what I seen. But that's going to be part two of this. This story right here is real. This story right here is raw, okay? Y'all getting the first, the first hand, first hand of what I see. When Calvin came into that block, when we was at in the 16-man sale, this is what, like I said, I seen him coming down. I seen when they opened the gate, and he came in there. He jumped on the top bunk. There was a fat dude that I just did not like. You, ugh. I'm not, hey, I'm not dissing the fat people at all, but this guy right here, he was just he was just so uncomfortable to be around. He will always be farting. He'll always just he wouldn't wash up. He was just one of them cats that just that just uh, just so uncomfortable to be around, man. But there will be a part two of the story of Calvin. Alright? So y'all be on the lookout for that. Oh, it's coming. Trust me. It's coming. It's finna get real, real. Alright, so as always, I, and let me let me do a couple of shout outs right quick. I want to thank everybody that subscribed to my channel, okay? I want to thank everybody that took the time to subscribe, okay? I want to thank everybody that be hitting that like button. That right there showed me that y'all like the video and y'all feeling my content, okay? I really want to shout out everybody that be hitting the cash app up. Okay, because this is my job and I only get paid when y'all pay me. Okay, so I appreciate everybody. Okay, that be blessing the cash app. Okay, if you haven't joined to be a, to become a member of Lockdown 88, make sure you join. It costs you nine dollars and ninety nine cent. Okay, when I go live every Monday and Tuesday at seven o'clock, you get a badge assigned to your name. Also. I make I make movies also. I'm making a movie right now as we speak. I'm dropping it December 24th, okay? When you become a member, you get first access to watch my videos, okay? My home movies that I'm making, okay? So y'all be on the lookout for that too. Again, be on the lookout for part two. I'm out. The fat dude, he know who Calvin is. So he playing sleep. So Calvin laying on his bed, like on his back. And when you locked up, you can't really sleep. You can only light sleep. Don't you ever. You might not wake up. You might just drift off into eternity. Because somebody done did something to you bad. That took you up out of this life. So never go to sleep. For all you new inmates. That's, that, that might find yourself in the county jail. Or in prison. Don't you ever go to sleep. Around these men that you do not know. Is some guys in there that might just want to take you up out of there just in the name of taking you up out of there. So Calvin is somewhat sleep. The fat dude. 
Fat dude right here, bottom bunk. There's somebody right here, middle bunk, and I'm on this side. So you can say I'm on the left side of the bottom. Calvin is in the middle at the top. Fat dude over here to the right at the bottom. So it's like like this way. That's how he that the fat dude can look at him diagonally, and I can look at him this way. While locked up, don't you ever, don't ever sleep on your stomach. You would think that people would know that, but people don't know that. Don't you ever sleep on your stomach, and I'm going to tell you why. If you sleep on your stomach, a guy, two guys can grab your legs, one leg here, one leg there, and they can put a towel on your neck and hold you down that way and commence to beating the living crap. I, I done seen it before. I done seen where this guy... For no reason, these bullies that wanted that wanted his phone time. What's phone time? When you get on the phone talking to your loved ones, some guys that approach you say, "Yo, can you do a three way for me? Can, 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 can you call? Can, can you have your people do a three way for me? Call this person. Call that." He refused it. So these two bullies, they got out of him at nighttime. He was sleeping on his stomach like a baby. Sucking his thumb. He wasn't. He wasn't sucking his thumb. I'm just playing, y'all. Hit that like button. Dude was. Just laying on his stomach, sleeping real good. Next thing you know, one guy grabbed his legs, held him down. The other guy grabbed his, um, had his towel wrapped around his neck right there and held him down. And the third guy got the beat, you know, with soap in the sock. Boop, 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 boop. Dude was screaming, hollering, right? Where's the guards? Where's the guards? No guards, right? But well, this is why I tell y'all, don't sleep on your stomach. Let's get back to the story, though. Hit that like button. So, fat dude, get up. Um, Calvin is actually laying on his back. So, good job, Calvin. So, Calvin laying on, laying on his back, you know, dozing off. He had a long night, long day, right? Then dude, fat dude, grab him. Boom, right? Grab him like up here, to his up top right here on the shirt, grabbed him and snatched. Now listen, you talking about six feet, six feet in the air. Grab him, slam him down. Boo! Everybody woke up. I'm like, what the? F I'm looking, everybody looking. Fat dude commenced to start hitting him, right? Remember I said Calvin, Calvin know how to fight. Calvin know how to use these, baby. But you talking about a fat, 395 pound, maybe six foot big guy, fat guy, right? So he put his weight on top. Donkey called him. Yeah, yeah, this for so and so. This for so and so, right? But Calvin ended up wiggling out of it. It got the beep, 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 beep. Calvin get the whip in the mouth, beating fat boy down. I'm talking about boom, bombing on him, right? So they fighting. For, well, Calvin's fighting now. At this point, Fat Boy boiled up while he, he getting pounded out. So then the guards like, "Hey, hey, cut! Stop that! Cut that out! Cut that out!" They they open the gate. He had to wait for backup to come. Three of them ran in there. They end up grabbing Calvin up off of him. They take Calvin somewhere. I don't know where Calvin's at. They take the fat dude out of there and put probably put him in a hole or probably put him downstairs in the board um the board tank. So at this point, everybody up and everybody like, like everybody hyped up. Everybody like, man, what happened, man? Man, what was, what was that all about? So then word got to spread enough, you know, why he did what he did. Um, and they like, word? Oh, heck, so, man. Uh, man, if I would have known that. Dudes always be talking about what they would have did and how they would have did it. Hey, man, get out of here. You wouldn't you have did nothing, dude. You went here. For traffic tickets, knowing you about to go home in three or four days, you ain't about to crash out and get additional 30 or 40 days. Cut it out. Dudes, dudes be capping their butt off. Anyway, so everybody up now. We are talking about it and, you know, discussing this case. And, you, and, you know, it's I, I don't really know these cats at all. I don't I don't know Columbus, Ohio politics, but the guy who, who, who um, baby mama and child got unalived by Calvin, I did know of him. I heard his name a couple of times. So I knew that he was a serious cat out here. So all I'm thinking is like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, that, oh, that's him. Oh, he did. Oh, 
Ooh, that's that's a tough one. He better get gripped up. He better get gripped up fast. So I wouldn't see Calvin for. Okay, so this was the time, y'all, when I told y'all that I caught them two bodies on that gun. This so this was me. This was that time with me facing that ten year bid. Okay, and for y'all that want to know again. It first started off as second degree murder, then it went to manslaughter, then it copped all the way down to felony possession, felony uh, possession of a possession of a weapon and the use of a felon, and then it got pleaded. Then that, it, that's what it got to. Okay, long story short, how I know y'all like man, no, he lied, he lied, he lied. Well, when you get the person who gun it actually was that came forward and said, this is mine. He didn't have nothing to do with it. But at this time, I had to plea out because if I would have went to trial and fought, oh, I probably would have lost. I was broke in them days. I couldn't afford no lawyer. So yeah, I, if I would have fought that, I would have probably, we, we wouldn't be talking right now. I probably would be doing that 20 years right now. All right, or 25 years. Okay, y'all would not be hearing me tell these stories, these prison stories, these jail stories, right? I wouldn't be out here telling y'all to hit that like button if I would have fought that and went to trial. But I pleaded out, okay? Got my 10 years. Ended up doing two years. So I'm trying to figure out when did I run into Calvin again from that day where I seen them get through off that bump and then he put in that work on the fat dude. And I was happy he put in it because I did not like that fat dude. He was just so uncomfortable to be around. So I'm going to say I didn't run into Calvin until I got to Greensfield Correctional Facility. So I'm going to say this was, I don't know, maybe 2007. No, 16. No, hold up. 10. 2014. It was 2014 or 2015, one of them. I end up in Greensfield Correctional Facility. Go through the process, you know. And I'm going to give y'all the process. Since y'all since y'all cats out there that have never been locked up before, this is what you got to look forward to. When you get when when you when you get your time, when the judge sentences you. You don't automatically get on a bus and go to prison. No, they could come that night. They could come the next day. They could come a week from now. They could come a month from now. They could come three months and you could be still in that jail before they come get you. Prison is way better than the county jail. Anybody that been locked up to all the felons that's in the comment section that ever been locked up before, let the people know that. You rather do your time in prison than in the county. You cannot, you, you can't, it's like you on lockdown 23 and 1. Shout out to my boy 23 and 1, Josh, right? In the county, you damn near in there 24 lockdown, period. Um, In prison, you get, you got the yard, you get the workout, um, you, you can get a job, you can, it's, you got, uh, way more freedom even though that prison is is a is a messed up place but i'd rather be in prison than in the county any given day the food is way better you get to have commissary it's a lot of things and i'm not trying to glorify you don't want to go to prison or jail anyway so let's let's get that straight let's get that straight off the top so let's get back to the story so uh, we, I'm in process, and you know, the first thing they do, when you get off that bus, you line up, you get the captain come out there, he get the gap and run in his mouth, all up in your face, telling you what you going to do, what you not going to do. This is my house. You all ain't nothing but inmates. I'll run this, this, that, that, or this, whatever. Y'all go to the line. You got to strip butt, booty, asshole, naked, right? All of y'all get naked. Y'all gotta get naked. They don't they throw like this powder on you. I guess this powder is like for like I honestly think it's for the white guys. And no disrespect to the white guys, but it's really for people that get lice. 
and bed bugs, stuff like that. And we all know majority of white people get lice more than black people. So they throw this this um this powder concoction on you. It's from head to toe. It's like a it's like yellow. So you get this um powder through on your naked body and then y'all go to the showers. So you in the shower, you washing up the 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 um the water is damn near cold, so it's not a comfortable wash at all. So you in there washing up, getting the stuff off all off of you or whatever. Then you get dressed. After you get dressed, you go into this hallway and you sit down. Right? They give you um they call your name, they give you your property, they give you uh three shirts, three pairs of pants, the shower shoes. They give you this uh, off-brand toothpaste, um, towels, you know, just regular basic necessities. So after you get these things, you go back and sit down, then a counselor calls you. The jail, the prison process when you first get there is so long, man. Somebody told me that was in the Army that been locked up. He said, man, this is just like basic training, man. When you go to the Army or the Marines, it's like the first week is just paperwork and just counseling and all this and that so it ain't really nothing inside i'm just letting y'all know what you got to go through when you get locked up like going to go do time in the penitentiary so the all that you know i go through my process and everything get classified no i'm not a gang member no i don't fear for my life no i don't i don't believe i have any problems in here this that whoop de whoop right so I end up get, I end up going to my pod, right? I'm not gonna say the pod because some there's some things that's going on in that pod right now that I'm not gonna mention that can get a lot of guys in trouble. You know, I got a lot of homies that's locked up still to this day, okay? That I'm not gonna even tell you. I'm not telling y'all the exact location. Just know it's Greenfields Correctional Correctional Facility, okay? You got activities going on in there with the cell phones. You get caught with a cell phone that's five years off top. No, the uh, the captain, the warden, nobody want to hear. You get caught with a cell phone, it's a wrap. Why you say, man, but I see guys on TikTok all the time with um, cell phones. Well, I'll tell y'all right now, I wouldn't be doing that. If you got a phone, you better keep that thing hidden. I want to be out there recording people because all they got, never mind, never mind, I'm saying too much. But anyway, so I ended up running into Calvin, okay? When I seen them, when I, when, when I seen Calvin for the first time out in the county, I'm going to say Calvin weighed uh, maybe about 170, give or take. When I seen Calvin, this time Calvin was stacked. Calvin was big. Calvin got some weight on him. Calvin, he, he hasn't been pushing about, about 230, 235 muscle. Okay. Um, Calvin had a couple of scars on his face, so I know he been cut. I know he been he he been in here in, in battle. Okay. <clears throat> so when I see him, I say, oh, okay. I mean, I didn't go up to him and say, oh, what up, Calvin? What up, bro? I didn't even know him. You know, I just, I you know, whatever. So I see Calvin and he just looked like he he bugged out. Like his eyes are like he's just, just always on alert. So I'm like, <clears throat> okay, I guess that's what prison do to people, huh? Let me tell y'all something. When I got locked up, the only thing I feared was that if if I got maced, because I got asthma, if I got maced and I couldn't survive that mace, meaning if I if I would have suffocated, if a guard would have maced me and restrained me to a bed or a chair and put a spit back over my head, I seen that happen to somebody. I seen somebody die that way. It was an unruly inmate that was giving the staff a problem. And what they do, they whipped them out, maced the heck out of them, put them in his chair, put a spit bag over his face. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. He shaking and stuff they didn't pay no attention to him that man died right there in that chair and you know what they said they 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 they, they just swept it under the rug swept it under the rug there was no repercussions they didn't get in trouble i'm gonna let y'all know right now 
It's not the inmates that you should be afraid of. It's the guards. That's their house. They can set you up. They can plant a knife in your cell. They can hire um, guys in there to torture you, to beat you up, to probably take your manhood. These guards play for keeps, and they dirty. These, gu these guards are dirty. And um, a guy, I, I seen a guy that was barking on him, being very unruly. He got whipped out, maced out, and murdered in a chair no matter how you want to cut it no, no matter how you want to look at it they murdered that man so that was the only thing that i fear i didn't i didn't fear getting stabbed i done been stabbed before y'all want to see it right there see that it went in right there bam been stabbed before when i got stabbed i didn't even know i was stabbed because i was getting it in on the yard getting it on on the yard right when you, we'll talk about that later. We, 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 I'll give y'all some yard stories later. Let's get back to Calvin. So I see Calvin. Calvin over there looking, bugged out. All right, and this is this is all of my first day too, but not not my first my first day being out in um, GP. That's general population with all the inmates. Okay, so I see Calvin over there, and I'm like, oh okay. So then this one cat that I knew came. He was like, D, is that you? I said, oh, what up, my N-word? You know, we dapped up. You know what I mean? What you in here doing? What you doing in here? I said, man. He like, man, don't tell me you snitch. You snitch. You snitch, didn't you? He, he was a funny guy, like a funny guy like me. I said, no, nah, he got my paperwork. So he going through. He's like, dang. And you have to plead. Hold on. You got. Oh, oh, oh. So he, he knew what it was. He like, yeah, okay, yeah, just. Yeah, that's, that's a cold piece, but, you know, he said, well, shoot, I'm in here doing 15, dude. Shoot, I, I just got here a month ago, so, you know, we I'll show you around this, that, whoop de -woo. So he's showing me around. He showing me who cool, who not cool. If you went to, um, if you if 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 you need, if you need, like, CDs, headphones, um, just the story guide. The story guide to somebody that buy a whole bunch of commissary and just sit on it. And then when everybody run out of their commissary, they go to him and then you 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 get a let's say you go to him and say, yo, let me get a pack of noodles on um, when commissary day coming back around. You got to get him two packs. So he basically double double in his money. And then if he don't like you or whatever, he will hit you over the head. And if you don't pay that debt, it's going to be trouble because he got a couple of goons out there that will run down on you and collect that debt for a fee, of course. So. Um, he just showed me around, showing me who is who, stay away from that dude, don't talk to that guy at all, you know, there's a, there's a booty warrior right there, do not talk to him, these are the games that he play, I'm gonna tell y'all about M.A. Sweet Low, I already did a video about M.A. Sweet Low, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a whole video, a whole series about M.A. Sweet Low in Greenfield Correctional Facility, okay, so, um, I, I see him and he, he, he like, um, he like, Hey, you know that dude Calvin? I said, yeah, I heard about it. He said, Hey, it's, it's, it's money on this head. And I'm thinking about collecting it. I said, what you mean collecting? He was like, man, Hey, where it is, man, it's 50 racks on this head. And, um, shoot, dudes know it. And I, I said, that's why he got them scars on his face and stuff. He was like, man, Cash be trying to get at this dude like every month, man. Like at least twice a month, somebody trying to take him out. And I'm thinking, I'm, I've been watching him for this month, for this whole month that I've been here. As soon as I got here, I've been on it, you know. I was like, hold on, you've been here for a month. And from the day you got in the process and intake, you had it on your mind that you trying to plot and to get to get out on Calvin? He was like, yeah, man, shh, keep it low, man. I said, well, hey, hey, the way Calvin looking, man, he, hey, he been battle tested, man. You don't have to come right. He was like, yeah, but I was thinking, you want to get out on it too? I said, heck, heck, no. Nah. You crazy? Look, dude was kind of off. He was off his rocker, okay? Because first of all, I'm doing of what I, I thought I was about to do the whole 10 years. Thank God I got out in two years, okay? But I'm like, if we, even if we, if we do this and we try to get, see, I got up in here and I'm already 
trying to get put into some BS. I'm thinking to myself, like, if if we do this and we succeed and we get caught, and we will get caught, okay, my 10-year sentence is not finna turn into 40 years. My 10-year sentence is not about to turn into 80 years. My 10-year sentence is not about to turn into a life sentence. A lot of cats that go to prison that's looking at two years, five years, 10 years, they get involved in things that they should not get involved in. They end up stretching their time all the way out, okay? I'm going to tell you all the thing before we get into the story again. These are the things that you should avoid while locked up. Do not gamble. If you cannot cover that debt, if you don't got that debt upstairs covered, like if you gamble for like 10 soups and a couple of pops, you better have them, them 10 soups and a couple of pops upstairs. Because if you out there talk about, oh, I'm going to pay you when, when my girl send me the money and she don't send that money, you better hope dude is patient. You better hope dude ain't one of them guys that, that you only got one time that messed me over. And I'm setting an example. So do not gamble. Do not do not bet. Okay? Do not borrow. Do not borrow unless you can pay back. And don't be sitting up there for you young, young guys that be coming in there locked up that don't got nothing. Don't be taking nothing from nobody. Okay? Because they might want something else from you that you don't want to give up, if you know what I mean. Um, case of point, inmate Sweet Low. Sweet Low will lend you some things. And when you try to pay him back, he like, uh-uh. I don't want that. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. And, and and sometimes it get cold at night. And I need somebody to hold. So that might be your payment to sweet low. So you young inmates that don't know better, don't be taking nothing from nobody, man. Don't do that. Okay? Um, If you don't roll that way, stay away from the punks. Stay away from the boys. Okay? You say, punks, boys, what's that? Um, stay away from the gay guys, okay? Number one, if you're not gay, you shouldn't be around them, um, conversating with them and stuff like that because another thing in prison, birds of a feather flock together. If guys see you out there hanging with the gay guys and you're not gay, they're going to automatically assume that you're gay. And some guys might try to punk you. Some guys might try to take things from you. So, you know, always watch your surroundings and be careful who you talk to. Now, I'm not saying you can't talk to the gays. I'm not saying you can't talk to the boys. I'm not saying that at all. But let business be business, all right? But if you roll that way, hey, do your thing, homeboy. I told y'all that all my videos, I can't tell a, another man how to program. Hey, either you going to listen to me or you not. The choice is yours, right? Like Fleece Johnson, the choice is yours, right? So, um... Oh, have y'all heard about Fleece Johnson? I heard that he was out. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section if Fleece Johnson is um is released. So now you got um so I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm not finna I'm not finna be involved in that, man. You you crazy. He like, are you sure, man? Sure. I mean, hey, it's fifty racks, man. Twenty five for you. Twenty five for me. Sure. I'm in here. I'm I'm like, nah. I'm straight, but anyway, um, I'm going to holler at you in a minute. Yo, this is part two, okay? I want to appreciate everybody that hit... Oh, oh, don't worry, y'all. It's going to be a part... It's going to be a part three. Chill out. Chill out. It's going to be a part three, so chill out. Now, I need everybody... Well, I want to thank everybody to hit that like button. I want to I want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel, because you didn't have to, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you for you taking the time out and subscribing, okay? I appreciate you for hitting that like button. I appreciate everybody that been blessing the Cash App. I do, I do appreciate y'all for blessing that Cash App. If you have not joined my page, make sure you join so you can get your badge, okay? So you can get first access for the for my movies that I'm dropping. First movie coming out December 24th, okay? I go live every day. Why did I say every day? I go live Monday, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m., okay? So if, you, if you're in Michigan, New York, right, 7 o'clock. So if you're in Cali, I think we're three hours behind y'all, so it might be four, 
4 o'clock or 10 o'clock for y'all. I'm not sure. But I know 7 p.m. Detroit time. I go live 7 p.m. Okay. Um, part three is coming up, y'all. And part three might be the last video. I'm going to talk about Calvin. So if y'all haven't hit that like button, hit that like button. And I'm out. The streets caught up with him. Full video. Hit that like button. Let's get to it. So I'm walking the track. Three bloods approach me. They like, yo, I heard you and Calvin is from the same city. I said, yeah, yeah, we from the same city, but I don't know him like that. They like, nah, nah, it ain't, it ain't that. It's just, we just want to know, like, do you know him? No. I'm like, nah, I mean, I seen him around the way, but you know, I don't know him personally. You know, man, he never um, exchanged words or anything like that. What's up? They like, well, you know it's a hit out on them for 50 bands, right? 50 racks. I said, yeah, I heard about that. They like, well, what's up? You you, you want to get out on it? I said, listen, one of my homeboys already approached me with that. Look, I'm trying to get in here, keep my head low, do my time, and get up out of here. I'm not with none of that. They like, come on, bro, man. Stop acting like that. Man, be, man, stop acting like I said, what? He said, I said, stop acting like I said, okay. Bop, popped off on him. Beep, 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 beep. Nickelodeon. Beep, beep, boom, 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 boom. Bam, wham. I stole off on the first blood. Bam, 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 bam. The second one tried to hit me with the right. Boom, he hit me, caught me like, uh. I came back with the left like, bam. Put him to bed. Put him to bed. The other blood, he looked at me, put his fist up. I could tell he really wasn't with it. I just barked on him like, man, what you gonna do? He basically cowered out and started backpedaling. Now I'm looking around because I'm seeing, you know, all the attention is coming, is looking this way. And I see some more bloods running down, coming down this way. It's about eight of them, so I, I get to running. I get to run. I'm like, yo, guard, guard, guard. Get down, get down. You know, they up there with the guns on the towers. Get down, get down. Everybody been locked up before. Y'all know what I'm talking about, where there's no warning shots. The only warning shot that you get is when you on your way. The bloods is maybe about 20 feet away from me. They getting down. I get down. Put your hands behind your head now. I put my hands behind my head. They pat me down, snatch me up. They, they I mean, they, I was the problem. So they walked me. And before all y'all, before all you and all you haters out there be talking about, oh, oh, Dante told he snitched. Let me tell y'all, I already put in my work. I already slept three of these cats already. I can't fight eight bloods. Come on, man. Y'all use y'all head. Y'all always talking about, oh, what you would have did in that situation. I was survived. I was known to put things to work and push that. All right. So don't sit up there and tell me, oh, why, why you yell to the guard for help? What would y'all would have did? Some of these cats probably had a stop playing these games talking about what y'all would have did and what y'all wasn't going to do. But I know one thing, y'all better hit that like button and stop playing yeah, I'm going to keep begging for these likes because y'all ain't hitting that like button. So it is what it is. If you not a member of Lockdown 88, y'all better join the page and stop playing. Let's go. They got me y'all jacked up. Got me in handcuffs, walking me off the yard. When we get past the first door, they're like, man, what the heck going on? What what is you doing? What 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 what's the problem? I said, listen, I don't know what's going on. I just seen something pop off over there, and I seen a whole bunch of guys running over here towards me, and I I, I panicked. I didn't know what was going on. I I I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to get assaulted. They like who who was the guys? I said I don't know. I just seen guys running over here towards me. I I didn't know. See, I had to play dumb because even though I was locked up and even though I just put hands on these three bloods and knew that they gang was on my ass, I couldn't tell on them. It's against the convict code to tell. I don't know who the guys was. I just seen a bunch of guys running over here towards me. I feared for my life. So I got to yelling, help, help. So, so they put me in this little cage. The cage was maybe about five by 10, a five by 10 cell type of cage thing. So they had me sitting in there. And this cage is like two doors after you come from the yard. So as people coming in, they can see me in there in that cage. So some of the bloods that was that was running, that they got put down by the guard, they was walking in. They was doing stuff like this, like doing stuff like that, saying plat, 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 and yeah, yeah. When we see you, this, that, you know, just popping off. So I got to popping off back out. I'm like, y'all ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to put y'all to bed like I did y'all homies. I'm going to put everybody to bed, right? So 
So they talking junk, I'm talking junk. The guard's like, shut up. They hit my cage with the knife stick. Boom, shut up. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, all right, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I just got here. Been here for four months now. I'm in tour with the Bloods now. It's up. It's up from here. I'm in tour with the Bloods now. Okay, because they wanted me to get out with them and try to set Calvin up. They wanted to collect on that 50 bands. They wanted me to be involved and get Calvin hit up. I wasn't with it. I'm my own man. I do what I do. Ain't no man going to tell me how to program the way I want to program. Ain't nobody going to dictate to me how I program up in here. They let me out the cage and they take me directly to the council. There's a counselor in there and there's two guards in there. And they ask me like, what's going on? What happened? You know, you're not a troublemaker. What happened on the yard? And I'm like, ain't nothing happened on the yard. You know, I just panicked. I seen a couple of guys running my way and they was like, stop right there. You mean to tell me when we run these cameras back, we not going to see you putting hands and knocking out three inmates? Huh? Let me see your knuckles. I did like that. They see it was all scraped up. They say, yeah, so you want to tell us what really happened, huh? Are you a crip? You got any tattoos? I said, man, I ain't no crip, man. I don't bang, man. I said, I don't, I said, listen, when y'all told me to get down, that's how my knuckles got scuffed up when I hit the, when I hit the ground, man. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get hit with one of them bean bags. So they like, law, nah, nah, you, you, nah, don't make, we run that camera back. You get eight months in the hole, flat out. We run that camera back and we see you touch one of them gang members. You getting eight months in the hole. So you might want to come clean. I already knew that them cameras where I was at didn't work at all. So I'm like, all right, man, go ahead and lock me up. What do y'all what do y'all want me to tell y'all? Y'all want me to tell y'all that I was out there fighting? No, I don't I don't know how them I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So run the cameras back, lock me up. I don't know. So they looking at me like man, this dude. So they said, all right, get him out of here. So they actually put me in the hole for five days. Meanwhile, throughout the prison, word done went out. Oh, y'all heard about what Dante did to them three bloods? Now, ain't nobody really saying this real loud because the bloods was heavy on the compound. So ain't nobody really saying it loud, loud, because they don't want that static if it get back to the bloods and the bloods might run down on that person that's spreading that. It makes me in there gossiping more than women. So you know it spread it out. Yeah, man, Dante knocked out about 15 bloods. I'm hearing stories where it was 20 on one. I was out there like Hercules, like boom, boom, swinging my mighty axe. Bill Goldberg and people. Bill Goldberg and people. Stone Cold stunning dudes. Choke slamming guys. All on top of things, right? Fathers from the truth. The truth is, like I told y'all, I slept three of the bloods and I took off running when I see the whole gang of them on my ass. So I, I, hey, it is what it is. So that's the real two. But you got cats out there running around just adding to the story. Now the bloods is like, we got to get this dude ASAP. So they sent the kites out. They like, where he at? Cats was trying to get at me while I was in the hole. I remember when I went out, this guy tried to cut me in the hole. We supposed to be, it's supposed to be closed security. It's supposed to be a guard right here to your left and a guard right here to your right at all times when you outside of that cell, when you back there in the hole. So I, but here's the thing. You get out for one hour and you go to this wreck yard. It's like a little cage where the only thing it's like cement walls, 15 feet walk good. And all you can see is the sky. That's all you can see. And they let like five inmates at a time go out there. Well, there was a blood out there. He already got the kite to put that work in on me. Next thing you know, the blood dude come out there. And I know he blood. So he looking at me and I'm looking at him. And he whip out a blade. I don't even know how he got it. I'm thinking one of them guards gave it to him or something. This hand closed. I got this hand open, you know. So when he trying to swing it, I'm swatting at him and trying to hit him with the left, right? So me and him facing off, he got the blade. I'm looking at his, I'm looking at his, at his, at his shoulder, you know, cause you can always tell, you can always tell how a man going to throw that punch or swing. You got to look at that shoulder cause it go like that or go like that. So I'm watching him. He watching me. We about to tangle. We dancing, right? So he trying to, uh, and I'm, oh, and I'm blocking it. So then 
He throw one. He he nicked me like right here. Nicked me right there. It ain't no scar there, so y'all can see. There ain't no scar right there. But he nicked me just a little bit like boom. Got up out of there. He went for it again. I came under. Boom, boom, boom. Gave him a hook. Then I beep, 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 beep. Nickelodeon. Right then I had him. He tried to rush me. At this point, the knife done flew over that way. Somebody ran over there and picked it up. So I had him down like this like he was he was trying to boost me at this like pick me up off my feet but i put my my right back foot back see i'm a fighter i am a certified fighter so y'all fighters out there take notes when somebody trying to pick you up the, off your feet put your right foot back lean forward on them so i lean forward on them i got that jackhammer right there and boom 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 fell flat boom i got the commission bam Bam! Get down, inmate! Get down! Boom! Boom! They shot me twice with that bean bag. Boom! Boom! Oh, I fell out. Bam! Hit the flow, man. You don't know pain until you get hit with one of them bean bags. You do not know pain until you get hit with one of them bean bags. I thank God it didn't hit me in the face and this beautiful chiseled face with my big nose. Right? So it's that. Bam! Bam! I just fall out. Boom! Hit the flow. I can't even breathe. I can't breathe. They rush in there. Do me dirty, right? Bam, bam. Cuff me up. They doing him dirty too. They doing that blood member, that blood dude dirty too. So they cut, they got the other guys up on the wall too, spreading them out. But I'm getting, they just mishandling. I'm talking about bending my arm in ways that an arm shouldn't be bent. So they get me out of there. They rushing me to the, uh, they rushing me to my cell and just opening and just throw me up in there like boom. Throw me up in there like, so I hit the wall like, man. So I'm like, you motherfuckers, throw me up in there like, I'm banging on the door. Man, I'm going to beat your open this door. Come back down here. It's up, all oh, this and that, right? Other guys that's on the door is banging. Boom, 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 boom. boom. What happened? What happened? What happened? Throw me up in there like, man. So word get around the compound. Oh, word got around the compound. Mission incomplete. It was no success trying to take out Dante, right? Meanwhile, throw me up in there like, meanwhile, somewhere else on the compound, Calvin ended up joining the Muslims. The Muslims, where we was at, they would accept you. As, as long as you take your Shahada and become Muslim, it doesn't matter if you was a It doesn't matter if you was a It don't matter if you was a junkie. It don't matter if you was the worst earth once you join them and you really really with them they accept you into their brotherhood and they feel like if Allah forgive you then they have no choice but to forgive you too so he joined them other cats that wanted to get at him it's like dang if we get at him that 50 bands is still in effect we gonna have to get at the muslims and how the structure of the power went there the bloods had the numbers but the muslims was vicious if it was time to get out the muslims was gonna push that oh you can't that blade immediately you didn't want to mess with the muslim and i'm gonna keep it real and for every jail dude that's locked up it ain't no disrespect to the bloods at all but y'all know that y'all got some fake dudes in there y'all know a lot of y'all guys is not about that action y'all know that y'all know when it comes to one on ones they will not do it they'll try to jump you because of the numbers a lot of them dudes join the bloods for protection and y'all know that i'm keeping it funky oh you can't and i'm not dissing the bloods i'm going out to the dirty bloods because the fools that i laid out on that yard was dirty bloods none of them wanted with me one-on-one -on -one. and that's another story that i'm gonna tell y'all when i was beefed out with the blood oh you can't calvin joins the muslims he ain't getting no more static on the yard that 50 bands is still in effect he going to juma he on this muslim tip he doing he doing what he do he praying he doing all that there's still guys out there that don't care about that there's inmates that don't care about religion there's inmates that don't care about their well-being all they care about is themselves they only care about today right now there was this guy i'm gonna call him slime ball Slime ball was the type that was real greasy, greasy type of cat. The type of dude that you cannot trust. You couldn't trust him as far as you can throw this dude. He was, he was just so treacherous. He was grimy. He had set you up. He the type of dude, if he can't beat you, he would plant a shank in your cell and alert the deputies that you got something in your cell to get you up out of there. Just so he don't have to throw hands with you. 
That's how he was. He was the type of dude that would go to the store guy, run up a big tab, and then drop a kite on him saying that he got some illegal contraband or he doing some illegal activity to get him shut down. That's what type of slime ball this guy was. So when it came to that dollar, oh, he was with it. And he didn't care that Calvin was with the Muslims. So here I go. Now it's time for me to get released. Now we finna go back on the other side of the compound. I'm in there maxed out, y'all. I'm in there working out, just doing push-ups, just doing sit-ups, just jogging around my cell, getting my upper and lower body strength on max mode. I finally get let out. Um... I have a whole bunch of homeboys that was Muslims, and they already put the word out. Even though he's not a Muslim, y'all can't touch him. If you touch Dante, then we gonna touch y'all. It's just gonna be a war. It, that's just what it's gonna be. Some of the blood's like, no, nah, man, we hear you. They was talking to the imam. The imam is like a pastor of uh, Islam church, if that make any sense to y'all. So he's the one, it's like the guy that got the keys. He's the shot caller. For the Muslims. He didn't want to make all the decisions. So he didn't want to vouch for me. He didn't want to speak it for me. Saying if y'all touch him. It, it's up from here. Okay. So the blood. One of the head bloods. I'm going to tell y'all what his name. His name was Big Five. Big Five was like the leader of the bloods on that compound. Big Five and the Imam having conversations. Big Five like look. I respect that and all. But he going to have to run a fade with somebody. Because we just can't let that go. Our name is getting tarnished. They talk about this dude that knocked out 10, 10 of our people. They spread in this narrative that we saw. So they line that up with Dante. And so the Imam was like, well, I'll get back at you. We'll let you know something later on. They said, all right. Imam approached me. He like, listen, you know we ain't going to let nothing happen to you. But they want to run a fair one with you. I said, it ain't. It's nothing. I'm. Hey, this is what I do, baby. Is we just fighting or is knife play what is it? So the Imam is cool with a lot of the guards because the Imam keep a lot of things under control. Even when other inmates is not affiliated with the Muslims be getting out of line, a lot of the guards go to the Imam and ask him, can he control situations before things explode? So he got a lot of pull. So he actually goes to one of the guards that work on the night shift and said, yo, I'm trying to conduct some business. This inmate and this inmate going to run a fair one. So this don't turn into something crazier. So as this going on, y'all remember the slime ball that I was telling y'all about? The greasy dude? He's plotting on Cal. His, he always got an ear out in the prison. He always got an ear out in the prison. So he knows what's going on. So he figured, okay, all the bloods, all the Muslims is going to be over here. Dante and his blood going to be getting it on as they get it on. Let me see what Calvin going to be. That 50 bands is still in effect. I'm going to strike and get Calvin. See, Calvin used to stay back. Calvin really done got into his prayers. Now, y'all, what I'm about to say next is going to be real treacherous. Viewer discretion is advised. So fast forward it to midnight. Me and this big blood dude. I, I ain't going to lie, y'all. When he came in there and he took his shirt off, dude had muscles where muscles did not supposed to be at. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm getting my one-two on. Y'all know that shoulder rub. Y'all know that Y'all know that shoulder, right? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm getting that shoulder on, right? He facing me. I'm fighting him. I mean, he facing me. I'm facing him. He facing me. I'm facing him. You know, I throw a jab out there, you know, he go back, you know, it don't hit him. He throw one at me. So we we kind of doing some love taps, you know, some love taps. Then we just get it on. Boop, 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 boop. He catch me one way. He catch me one way. Bam, bam. Mm. Bust my lip. Split my drill lip. I'm chasing blood. So I'm like, all right, there's nothing. So bam, bam, I come up out of Boom, boom. It didn't face. I'm like, damn, I'm hitting this dude as hard as I can. So he came up like, mm. boom, boom. I ain't going to lie. Y'all see my nose. This dude hit me so hard, my nose went this way, like, bam. Oh, my like, so dude broke my nose. So I'm like, it's nothing. It's nothing some, I got blood coming down right here. Y'all remember Eddie um, off of life when Eddie was fighting Goldmark off of life? That's how it kind of was. Dude had way more size than me, and dude could really throw a punch. He he was throwing them haymakers. He was catching me with something. I couldn't really get out of it because we in this cell, and then you really can't got no room to move around. So you know, I'm doing the best I can to the point he just caught me with a uppercut. He hit me with a, oh, you kick, oh, you kick, boom, right? I wasn't knocked out, but I was in a day. When he hit me, I just fell back like, boom. Oh, you kick. The guy's grabbing me. They're like, yo, they shake me. They're like, man, Dante, beat his ass. Oh, you kick. Beat his ass. So I'm like, I feel like I just got hit with a, like, with a big 
boulder or something. So I'm like, I'm trying to shake it off like. So then I realize like, oh shoot, I'm in a fight. So then I get back to it. Put a pause right there. Now we're going to go on the other side of the jail. So here go the slime bar. Calvin down there doing this a lot, right? He praying, doing what he do. He hear noise. So he, he looked, he don't hear nothing. You would think when a man praying, when a man is, pr let me tell y'all about prison, okay? You would think that when somebody's doing a very personal thing with God, that that should be sacred. This is the time, remember, we are in prison. That 50 bands is still in effect. This ain't the real world where, where rules, where rules and regulations is upheld. No, this is dog eat dog. This is the terror dome. Oh, you kick. So he's praying. He hears a noise. He look. He doesn't hear nobody or see nobody. So he go back to praying. Then he hear a footstep. Then he look again. And he like, is I'm tripping? Then he get to praying again. Then he look up. Slime ball right there with a the blade. Oh, you kick. Bam. Poked him up. He hit him right here. It came out right there. Ugh. So he's choking on his blood, right? Dude, run up out of there. The slime ball, run up out of there. Calvin choking. Calvin choking. Fast forward to where I'm at. Back at it again. Boom, 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 boom. I can't win. He got me. Got to the point where he had me in the headlock like this. He had me in the headlock trying to tap me out. So, at this point, I know how to get out of it. But at this, listen, man, we've been fighting for about five minutes, let alone 30 seconds of a fight. 30, people that actually fight, you know, even 30 seconds is too long. So, I'm gassed out. He gassed out. Oh, you kick. He got me in a headlock. And I got my chin tucked like this because he's not about to choke me out. I know how to get out. So, at this point, he's trying to choke me out. But I got my chin tucked so he can't get to my pipe to knock me out. So at this point, it's going on for about maybe about 50 seconds. So then now the Muslims breaking it up and the bloods rush in and we get separate, right? So they're like, y'all good? Y'all good? Y'all good? The Muslims telling the bloods, y'all good? It's over. That's it. That's it, right? So the Imam and Big Five, they end up shaking heads. It's dead, right? Situation dead. So everybody leaving. Lock down, lock down. Locked down, locked down, right? Everybody, what's going on? We thinking like, wait, I thought it was cool. We we already set this up, right? This this was this was already set up right here. So everybody going to get locked down. I go to where I'm going. Everybody going to where they going. Next thing you know, you see all these security coming in. You see the medical staff coming in. They tell us to lock down, lock down. Everybody going to their cells. Then we see a whole bunch of blood. We see a whole bunch of blood. And, uh, yo, it just, it got real crazy. It got real hectic. We still didn't know what was going on. Calvin had a bunkie. And his bunkie, they, they, they grabbed him up out of there. They snatched him out of there. Because the first person they would think that his bunkie did this to him. Calvin didn't make it, y'all. He did not make it. They had to airlift him up out of there. And he died on the way to transport. So with that, everybody like, what the heck happened? A guard finally told somebody like, yo, Calvin got stabbed. Calvin got stabbed. Somebody hit him up. So the imam thinking like, who could have did this? Who who did that? Who did this? So everybody discussing like, how did, how did, who did it? Every, you know, rumor circulating. Like maybe this fight was a setup. Oh, you kick for the play. Like the bloods was in on it. The Muslims was in on it. You know, 50 racks is 50 racks, okay? But what they didn't know, the slime bar made that play. He was an opportunist. So he seen an opportunity, and he went for it, and he succeeded. After a while, you know, after everything settled down, um, the slime bar, you know, he around there doing what he do, being a slime primary guy. I don't know the details of how he got paid, or even if he got paid, I just know that the hit was put out on Calvin. It was executed by the slime bar under the guise of me and the blood fighting. Oh, you kick! 
And um, that's it, man. The moral of this video right here is that you can make one mistake out here in this world. One mistake that'll cost you your life. It might don't cost you your life right then and there, but it could come years later. That action that you made out here on the streets years ago, months ago, it doesn't stop because you get locked up. Nah, sometimes it will follow you to prison. And well, Calvin gave his life to Allah, to Islam, and in the middle of him doing Salat, he lost his life. So let this serve as a warning for all you game bangers, all you steppers out there. It is what it is. I'm out, y'all. That 50 bands is still in effect. Oh, you king. Oh, you king. That 50 bands is still in effect. Oh, you king. The Dante Show.